I think we need to have a talk. So as you know, we're in the middle of this big election season and Republicans and Democrats are beating each other up trying to determine who can screw things up even more than they already are, which on the surface seems like mission impossible, but when you have people raising tens of millions of dollars to pay a job that pays only a few hundred thousand, well, that should be all the proof you need about the kind of megalomaniacs we're dealing with. Everybody is talking about the polling numbers and the favorability ratings and the unfavorability ratings and caucuses and fundraising and ground games and super PACs and battleground states and wedge issues. And while the candidates on both sides are trying to win your vote by playing loose with the facts, and let's be honest here, they are all 100% USDA certified Angus B bullshitters. Is all this horse trading really worth the trouble? It's all bullshit. Well, consider this. Roughly 50% of America is registered to vote. And of that 50%, only about 50% actually exercise the right, leaving roughly 25% of the country motivated enough to actually take part in the democratic process. Of that remaining 25%, at least half admit voting for the lesser of two or more evils, leaving just 12 or 13% of the country actually voting for a candidate they believe in. Meanwhile, the remaining 12 or 13% that do vote pull about 90% disapproval ratings of members of Congress, yet they re-elect about 90% of the 90% they believe are out in Buck Rogers' deep space, canceling out the votes of the other 12 or 13% that are actually participating in the voting process and trying to take out the garbage. People like you and me. Wow, that's messed up. In other words, every time you vote, a low information voter in another part of the country is pulling the lever at the same time and making sure your vote for honest, real, scorched earth kind of change was canceled out. And it's not like either party can abdicate or talk their ass out of this mess. Can't blame it on the pagans, can't blame it on the Klan, can't blame it on the Wiccans or the Whigs or the Native Americans. The two major parties got us here and the two major parties are gonna drive us off the cliff like Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Just take comfort in knowing there's nothing more you can really do about it. Maybe at one time, sure, there was a small window of hope, but when we came to that fork in the road, we ran over the fork, blew a tire, careened into the woods, and became a Scooby snack on the forest floor. We are a carcass of our former selves. We got to the writing corpse stage of the political process once we started hiring people that were a direct reflection of ourselves. Now, luckily, we got away with that for a while. We were hardworking, bare knuckled, blue collared buckled down self-starters that took pride in doing for ourselves what felt undignified to ask others to do on our behalf. Government, by and large, reflected those same values. They stayed out of the way and left us alone. And we used to be a nation with ambition. It took us just eight years to go from Kennedy's man on the moon speech to actually putting a man on the moon. Now we sell Snuggies over the TV so nobody even has to get dressed anymore. In the good old days, you had to do something to be something. Now failure is a recognized alternative lifestyle. And by placating the losers, we have marginalized the winners. But it's really even worse than that because failing to try is now more advantageous than trying, failing, and falling on your ass once in a while. Listen, you can't beat cancer unless you radiate your brain or jab toxic chemicals into your veins or puke yourself to sleep for weeks and months on end. And while the cure can sometimes kill you, the disease will certainly kill you unless you're courageous enough to take some bad medicine along the way. Getting healthy usually means things have to get worse before they get better. But voters don't want any part of that. I'll have a hamburger, for which I will gladly pay you Tuesday. So we've elected politicians that look, talk, walk, act, and quack pretty much like us. Social engineers on the left, Jesus freaks on the right. Unfortunately, we can't spend our way or pray our way out of this dumpster fire. What it boils down to is this. The right to vote is really nothing more than a dog and pony show. It's vaudeville. It's entertainment. Men and women are getting elected to high office by pimping votes from Americans that really have no earthly business taking part in the democratic process. Who is the vice president currently? Vice president is, um, Shouldn't that alone put you on voting probation? We expect so little of our leaders because we ask so little of ourselves. I mean, God forbid if we did some homework and educated ourselves on the important issues did a little research on our own time, fact checked the media once in a while, and came to our own conclusions rather than being spineless, manipulated sheep that follow the herd wherever it leads. If you never learn to sniff out the bullshit, you can't avoid stepping in it. We're a country fascinated with instant gratification and living in the now. All that matters is the next second, and as long as our politicians tell us exactly what we want to hear, it's exactly what they want to hear. 
It's a morbid and depressing example of Stockholm Syndrome, stacked with deep insecurities that keep our henchmen employed. But the henchmen aren't the problem. We are. We're the carpenter, I, I mean the voter, that blames the hammer, the ballot, every time we drive a crooked nail, I, I mean the politician. Maybe some of us were never meant to swing a hammer, just like some of us were never meant to tackle a fork in the road.